Pretty fun slate in DFS for tonight. You got a couple of options I think you could justify as your top pitcher on the night. And I would say the top three options, the three I like the most, are all in what I would deem to be plus matchups, whether from a, a floor perspective or from a ceiling perspective. So pretty fun slate in that regard and not bad for stacking either. So despite there being just seven games on this slate, still a pretty good offering. So we're going to break down which of those pitchers I like most, how we're viewing them, and also the top stacking options for tonight over on FanDuel.com. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down this seven-game main slate with locks up for 7, 10 p.m. Eastern for tonight. The only game with a weather note for today is going to be a, a temperature. That is actually just one game with a temperature above 77 degrees. That game is in Arizona for the Diamondbacks and the Phillies. That is an 89-degree game, and the roof will be open there. They published that over at the Diamondbacks website ahead of time, so we know the roof will be open, 89 degrees, relative to other parks on the slate. That is going to be the best one for offense. Now, does that mean you automatically stack there no will we stack there yes but uh we'll talk about why and uh, where that ranks among the stacks later on but that's the lone weather note for tonight we'll dive in into the fun pitching options and more in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcast we are an apple podcast spotify stitcher wherever you find your podcasts you can find us there while you're there if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on spotify or apple podcasts also check us out over on the fanduel youtube page make sure you're subscribed to the fanduel youtube page and if you like what you hear Leave us a thumbs up. Have you ever started a player in your fantasy football lineup who scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20? Well, with FanDuel's NFL best ball drafts, you don't have to worry about that. Draft your team, and each week, the highest scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long. Leagues can be free to play or for money and range from 3 to 12 players. The NFL season will be here before you know it, so head over to FanDuel today and get in on the action. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate, Zach Eflin checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $10,800, followed by Logan Webb at 10-6, James Paxton facing Colorado 98, Jesus Lazardo 95, Bryce Miller on the opposing side of Jesus Lazardo 9,000, with Jack Flaherty and Luke Weaver as the other guys at $8,000 or higher. Now, the three guys to me who stand out most are going to be James Paxton, Jesus Lazardo, and Zach Eflin. And as I mentioned, all three of those guys are in at least decent matches for today in terms of strikeout stuff like that. Paxton's matchup is the best. So I want to put him number one for today due to the fact that he is facing Colorado. And Paxton does still have some issues. Primarily, it's the batted balls that have been his bugaboo. But he's getting strikeouts. And he gets the Rockies in Boston tonight. So I think we're going to want to be here on Paxton and put him at the top of our list. We got a five-star sample now on Paxton with the Red Sox this year. And again, the batted balls are an issue. He's let up a 42% hard hit rate with a 48% fly ball rate. But the Rockies don't generate any power, so it might not matter. They have a 121 ISO against lefties. And remember, that includes their sample at Coors Field. So even with half their games against lefties at Coors, they have done nothing from a power perspective. Once you account for the park factor, their WRC plus is 61. That is absurdly low. So it's a plush spot for anybody. And again, Paxton at least has the strikeout portion going for him right now. He has a 33% strikeout rate through five starts. The Rockies, a 27% strikeout rate against lefties. So they're a good matchup both for floor and for upside. I've got Paxton projected for 8.5 strikeouts tonight, which is the highest number on the slate. So we will need to make sure the weather's good to go here. It looks like it's better this morning than it was last night. But if we get the all clear there, Paxton will be my top starter of the night. And he is a guy I do feel great about with a salary of $9,800. For the second slot, if I were talking about things straight up, I would prefer Zach Eflin because he gets a great matchup here. Basing off of the A's, we always want that. But I can save $1,300 by going down to Jesus Lizardo. And I think I prefer that route. And the matchup for Lizardo from a floor perspective is not as good as what we get with Eflin or with Paxton because he's facing the Mariners and they've got some big guns against lefties. 
but they also strike out a bunch. 27% strikeout rate versus lefties, which is tied for the highest mark on the slate. We've also seen Lazardo inching up a bit there himself in the strikeout department. Across his past five starts, Lazardo has been throwing fewer forcing fastballs, and the forcing fastball is a not a super high whiff pitch for Lazardo, so it's not a bad thing to see him scale back on that. And he has had some tough results in that time. He's had two bad outings specifically, but the peripherals for Lazardo are sick. He has a 2.53 skill interactive ERA with a 35% strikeout rate. It is a small sample, so I don't know if that will stick, but he is at least in the right kind of matchup to get strikeouts for tonight. Lazardo, due to the matchup, is not a cash game option. I think there you go with the higher floor matchup that we get with Paxton and Eflin. But for tournaments, I really have no objections here. Lazardo, well worth $9,500. And I think those savings are actually valuable on this slate. And they're valuable enough for me to put him above Eflin. So considering the stacks, the, the stacks a little bit higher salaried, I think it's okay to take the savings, dip down to Lazardo, and make him number two. So rankings for me for the studs, Paxton one, Lazardo two, Eflin three, for cash games to be Paxton one, and then I guess Eflin two, but would just kind of probably go with Paxton personally. Among the value guys, Luke Weaver is my favorite here. A lot of caveats apply to saying that. Uh, the first is that I'd rather spend up because Paxton's salary is 98, Lazardo 95. Those are not super bad, honestly. And second, Weaver has been far from flawless, even recently. But his matchup is good, and his salary is 81. So let's talk through his situation right now. Weaver is facing the Royals. They are a high strikeout offense with a 26% strikeout rate against righties and just an 80 WRC+. plus. So it's a great matchup both for DFS and for other stuff, for um, real-world pitching for Weaver. Weaver has had issues this year. His ERA is 6.27, but I feel like that number is pretty unfair. His expected ERA is 4.50. His skill interactive ERA is 4.04, and that number, I would say, is misleading because on the full season, Weaver's been letting up a lot of hard contact. And the one flaw with skill interactive ERA is that it doesn't do a good enough job of factoring that in. So... I would say the expected ERA of 4.50, a better representation of what Weaver has done than his skill interactive ERA. But Weaver has been getting better recently. Across his past six starts, uh, Weaver's been throwing a lot more cutters, and that has hurt his strikeout rate because it's down to just 20% in that time. But his hard hit rate allowed is down to 38%, which is about average, and that's a lot better than it was before his first three starts this year. Weaver's done this against pretty tough matchups. Now he's in a much better spot, so he is flawed, and I would rather spend up to get to Paxton, get to Lazardo, but I can see the case for Weaver, and I can't sit here now and tell you I definitively will not have Weaver in my player pool because I like the Rays for stacking, and they're pretty high-salaried. Rangers, same thing, so I can't guarantee you I won't use Weaver. I would like not to is the way I'd phrase it, but um, he's at least in consideration. So to me, preference is to get to Paxton, get to Lazardo, but I have Weaver as an outlet if stacking is a little bit tougher uh, than I'd like for tonight. Speaking of stacks, let's dive into those now and talk about those Rays. They are at Oakland for tonight. It's 61 degrees there, which is the coldest uh, on the slate, and it does downgrade the Rays, but I feel like we need to be here regardless. They're facing James Caprellian, who has had good results since he rejoined the rotation, and he is doing some things well, but the peripherals leave more room for us to be skeptical because the good is that Pac or Cap Caprellian has let up just a 37% hard hit rate across five starts, and that's a bit better than average. It's not bad, and you'll take that, but the rest of the data is where we can kind of get some excitement. 52% fly ball rate allowed, and that's pretty scary when you're facing a team with a 201 ISO against righties, even without uh, Brandon Lau on the roster. Uh, Caprelli had just a 17% strikeout rate with an 11% walk rate. He has gotten by with a low hard hit rate allowed. I just don't know if he'll be able to do that here. And I think that does allow us to stack the Rays against him. So the Rays are going to be my top stack, despite the fact their park factor for tonight is pretty poor. I think it's worth talking about Luke Rayleigh for a second because the Rays do platoon him where he doesn't play against lefties, doesn't start against lefties, I should say, but He's crushing righties with a 315 ISO. And the concern with guys like that who crush righties but don't start against lefties is, will they get yanked if a lefty comes in? The Rays don't do that with Rayleigh, at least typically, because he has finished nine consecutive starts. He has 
seven stolen bases against righties. So two sources of upside. He is a platoon bat, but he is one we can trust for DFS. And Rayleigh is honestly one of the lower salaried rates. Salary $3,100 for tonight. So I think Luke Rayleigh is someone we can trust, despite the fact that his archetype can sometimes be one we want to be wary of, of in DFS. Guys who leave early for pinch hitters are always going to be tough to sell, but Rayleigh doesn't seem to be that guy, at least based on the way the Rays have handled him across the past couple of weeks or so. Number two stack be the Rangers, also a pretty high salaried stack, but facing Tyler Anderson, who is still trying to get his groove back from last year. And when you're a, a pitcher who's struggling as a lefty, you probably don't want to face Texas because it's a rough spot. So I think the Rangers grayed out well from a stacking perspective. The Rangers against lefties, a 144 WRC plus and a 187 ISO. So that's tough for anybody. But it's tougher for someone who is still clearly searching to try to find the magic he had last year. Most recently, Anderson has been throwing more cutters and more changeups. It's an eight-start sample. And in that time, 14% strikeout rate with a 45% fly ball rate. The hard hit rate has been pretty good for Anderson that time. But the other issues that he's had, the fly balls, the lack of strikeouts, that has prevented the hard hit rate from being enough to help him get by. It's a pretty tough ask to force Anderson to go on the road and face the Rangers here. So I like them plenty as a stack for tonight. And the Rangers, I think, are a quality stack here. Now, the added perk here with the Rangers facing lefty is that a lot of the secondary guys benefit from that kind of matchup. Uh, Mitch Garver, Josh Young, Ezekiel Duran all get banned, bumps up. And it does help make them a bit easier to stack. Now, the one downside is that even those secondary guys, quote unquote, secondary guys in this team, don't come with low salaries. Uh, Garver's salary is 33. Young is 34. Duran is 29. So you're not really saving a lot of salary, but it is at least a little bit easier to get to them here. So both the Rays and the Rangers may require some gymnastics, trying to find some value plays somewhere to squeeze them in. But I think they're worth that effort. And that is part of why I wanted to go with Lazardo as my second ranked pitcher over Eflin, because I think salary will matter quite a bit for tonight. So Rays one, Rangers two. The best park factor tonight, easily, as mentioned, belongs to the Diamondbacks and the Phillies. Phillies are facing Tommy Henry, and they have not hit lefties well so far this year, but I still think we want to give them a look here. Henry has faced the Phillies uh, once this year. That was back in Philadelphia a few weeks ago, and he did let up just two earned runs there, but both those runs came on solo homers. So the upside was there. Henry... Had one good start after that, a really good start. He held the Rockies scoreless for seven innings. But as mentioned before, Paxton, the Rockies suck against lefties. Next start for Henry, the Nationals tagged him for five earned runs with two homers. So I think that kind of wipes out the goodwill from that quality start against the Rockies. Henry has thrown fewer curveballs his past six outings. And in that time, he has a 5.23 skill interactive ERA with a 16% strikeout rate and a 10% walk rate. The fly ball rate is 42%. And I think that's the cause of the home run issues. When you let up that many balls in play and a high percentage of them are in the air, probably going to get you in trouble at some point. So yeah, the Phillies have struggled against lefties, but I think there is enough here to make them one of the top plays of the night. Henry. Hasn't faced a lot of lefties so far this year. And you see that a lot with lefties where when they're facing an opposing lineup, you take out all the lefties except for the best ones. So the sample we have on Henry is small and it's basically just the best lefties he's seen. But those lefties have hit him pretty hard. And same thing as we saw last year. Both those are very small samples, but I do think it gives us the green light to go with Bryce Harper, with Kyle Schwarber here, because both those guys can hit lefties pretty well despite being left-handed. So I would say when you're stacking the Phillies, be receptive to Harper and Schwarber because Henry, when they've left lefties in the lineup against him, has not excelled against those guys. So I would say green light on Harper and Schwarber for this stack. Things to watch, a couple other offenses to consider for stacking. The Red Sox are facing Connor Siebold, who has had some really nice starts recently. Some of those were at Coors Field, which makes it a bit more impressive. But the peripherals are still not perfect. I think that means the Red Sox are in play for stacks, but I would not put them above the Phillies or the other two teams. So Red Sox probably fourth for me. Fifth would be the, the Giants. Facing Matthew Liberatore, who had an awesome start to this year, pitched really well in AAA too, but 
but he's come back to earth recently specifically because he's letting up too much hard contact. His hard hit rate allowed is 44% across four outings. The Giants have a 109 WRC plus against lefties. So I do like Lee Barrettore as an overall pitcher, which is why the Giants aren't higher on this list. But if you want more of an under the radar option for stacking, I would say the Giants might be in that discussion because of the hard contact Lee Barrettore has allowed. Finally, Matt Strom is starting for the Phillies, which means it's expected to be a full bullpen game. But Strom could go 40 to 50 pitches based on the length he's shown in the random starts he's made. And he's pitched really well this year. So that prevents me from being on Arizona, despite the fact this is a very good park factor for tonight. So the Phillies, yes, I will go to in the, the good park factor. The the Diamondbacks, not quite as much because I respect Strom, respect the Phillies bullpen. Sounds like everyone there should be available. So uh, I'm okay being lower on Arizona for tonight. Let's finish up with the dinger calls for today. The boring one, it is the Rangers against the lefties. So Adelis Garcia, who is in play against righties too, is going to be in play for tonight. So the boring home run call, Adelis Garcia hasn't had as many home runs recently, but I still feel like that's in his, his bag. So Adelis Garcia is the boring home run call. The fun one, Alec Bohm just came off the IL yesterday. So we get him back in there facing a lefty. Bohm, not a guy I turn to against righties, but against the lefty, good park factor. I can get behind that. So Dinger calls for this Monday, Adelise Garcia and Alec Bohm. That's all we got here for the solo shot for today. Back once again tomorrow for a full slate on Tuesday. To get that as it is posted, make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And like if, as mentioned, as always, if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Tuesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.